longer infrared laser module, 1064 nanometers. Nanometers? Nanometers? Nanometers. Oh, it's nanometers. Uh, a blue diode laser is 450 nanometers. So a blue diode laser will, of course, cut and engrave on wood and several other materials. There's a lot of metals that it will not touch. Yes, you can etch stainless steel with it. The problem is it makes things warp when you do it if it's thin material. And what I'm doing right here are some stainless steel buttons that go on the bottom of uh, skinny tumblers. It's a logo I'm making on here. And the problem I had before was, grab one here, is I was trying to do some tests with these, and I'll get you up close here. Hopefully this will focus, but they warped horribly on using a diode laser. So this uh, infrared laser here from Longer does a trick, and I'll tell you a little bit more about it. This is available for the Longer Ray 5 and the Longer B1, and I have it on the B1 right here. Now, something you need to know when you're, if, if you're doing this upgrade from a 20-watt uh, blue diode or 30-watt or 40-watt blue diode to this uh, Ruby 1064 nanometer infrared is the modules are not the same size. As you can see, this is much larger than what's on there. This is a 40 watt right here off my B1. So when it homes, it still homes fine, but your center point will no longer be the center point if you have a layout grid. It's going to change. So you're going to have to make adjustments for that. Just something to keep in mind. This does not use air assist. Uh, infrared head like this, a pulsed laser, is not designed to be cutting things, although they say you can cut like this super, super thin stainless steel sheet, which should almost be like tin foil. I don't know why you would do that, but they claim it'll do it. I haven't tried that. I'm not going to bother. But for uh, several different materials, and I'll show you some of the things I've been playing with, I even put my name on a rock playing with this thing. So I'll get into some of these other things that will do here, and I'll kind of try to give you some little close-ups. Now, also, there's a difference between etching and engraving. On most materials, this etches. It does not actually engrave. Uh, if you're going with acrylic, you can engrave acrylic. It'll actually engrave it. Uh, I haven't tried it on gold and silver because all my gold and silver bullion is... Well, I don't have any. Anyway, um, I have tried it on... Uh, a wrench. I've tried it on uh, one of the Dollar Tree stainless steel scrapers here. I was doing some experimenting when I first started it up. Put my name two different ways on an old hammer and I'll get you in here close and uh, kind of show you what it looks like. Here, I don't know how well this is going to show up. This is a line engrave right here. I did. My name. This is an old hammer, so it's been through the mill. And this is, done, uh, I should say, etch, not engrave. This is uh, with a fill, and it does do bare aluminum. Piece of aluminum angle here. This etch right here, boy, I hope you can see this. This is kind of tough to show. I should have made something bigger. This is a line etch here. And if you run your finger across it, it's somewhat rough. It almost isn't a grave. This over here is uh, done with fill. One of them cheap little wrenches you get with uh, different lasers and 3D printers. Grab one of those just for fun. Put my name on it. That's Phil right there. Here's another one of them little wrenches you get with a 3D printer or a laser or whatever. Uh, it has a chrome finish on it. I didn't want to use one of my good Snap-ons or Metcos, so grab this. It uh, etches, etch my name in it just fine. Comes out very, very sharp. And yes, I put my name on a rock. I went out in the yard and found a rock that was somewhat flat. Uh, this is not perfectly flat. So as uh, you get to the other end of my name here, the last R, it started to fall off on the curve. Focus is extremely important with a uh, infrared laser. With a blue diode laser, you have a few millimeters you can play with up and down, probably three or four millimeter focus offset I guess you could say and you would still get away with getting a good uh, engrave 
with the uh, infrared, you have one millimeter tolerance. So this fell off more than one millimeter, so it didn't quite make it. And I don't know, this is a piece of red granite. And it, say it did etch my name in it just fine. Of course, say, you know, an infrared laser, uh, infrared, you can't actually see the infrared beam. However, it does make a reflection on the material. So if you're going to be down there looking at it, you'll want to have some safety glasses or goggles on. And you want to have something uh, listed for a 1064 nanometer laser. Uh, generally, most of the uh, better goggles, like my cloud rays, are listed in the range. Uh, I don't know what the range is, but I know it exceeds the 1064 nanometer, and it still covers the 450 for the blue diode. So as you can see here, you're not really seeing anything. If you would get down and look underneath the uh, laser head itself, you would see uh, some very, very bright white light as it uh, etches that stainless. Now, something else you need to keep in mind is this is not a fiber laser. This is a pulsed diode laser. It's not a fiber laser. Big difference. They're both in uh, what they can do and what they cost. A uh, decent fiber laser will cost you several thousand dollars. Okay, as you can see here, I laid up some of these uh, that I was doing a trial on when I was still trying to do it with a blue diode laser. And hopefully you can see that they're horribly warped and it makes them completely unusable. Uh, with these here, there's absolutely no warping whatsoever. This is a very, very thin stainless steel. It has an adhesive back on it, and I do mean thin. A look at what I'm uh, working with here. Um, in general, diode lasers are worked with in millimeters per minute, and uh, CO2 lasers and infrareds and fibers are worked with in millimeters per second. So what am I using here for a setting? I'm using 100% power and 10 millimeters per second is where I've gotten the best etching so far. Here's one of my little test things. This is a uh, Dollar Tree scraper. And of course this over here was done with blue diode laser back when I was experimenting with some things. But this is where I was experimenting with different settings on the uh, infrared laser right here. And with all three of these settings, they pretty much all look the same. So what I'm working with here is what I settled on. Because this changed the uh, position of where my center point actually is, I had to kind of set this up to work from current position until I get a, 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 a template set up to do these. I'm actually doing these one at a time right now, so I haven't created a template. But again, remember if you have a layout grid that your center will not be in the same place as it was when you had the uh, bigger head on it, the diode head. Uh, if you have the 5 watt longer, Ray 5, I don't believe this will swap because this takes a, has a 5 pin head and as I recall the 5 watt, which I don't have anymore, was a 4 pin. So that would have to be changed. If you do have the air assist on your laser, uh, of course you don't use air assist with this at all. There's no need for it. I just took the tube and looped it back around and stuck it back through the Velcro there to keep it out of the way. You'll also note that the uh, wire for the laser connects on the front of the module instead of the back like it does with the diode, or the blue diode I should say. This is also a diode, just not blue. These, uh, again, these are logo buttons. This is for my uh, granddaughter's business. We kind of work together on different things. Hers is called a little bit of everything. Of course, we are called Moonshine Designs. And we also logo mark our things. There's a bunch that I did earlier with, with the dial laser. And I will be making a template for uh, making these in bulk without having to uh, set up on each one. This is uh, kind of the first time here with these. You may be able to see here that that has a little bit of a uh, brownish gold cast to it as it's been engraved. It will, you rub your finger over that and it, that uh, brownish gold cast goes away and you just have a perfect engrave. So how does this focus? 
or I should say, well, yeah, how does it focus? I'll show you that here in a minute. It has a little kickstand that you drop down, a uh, little bit different than the uh, heads on the B1 here, but it's a little bit longer kickstand and you look like you're farther away. As far as getting positioned on your work, there is a red laser beam that also coincides with where your laser is actually going to fire. And that is where you center it on your work or start in the left corner wherever you're starting from. I'm uh, working from center on these. So what I'll do is now is just move this over. Like I said, I don't have a uh, template set up yet. And I can look at that red laser beam and see when it's in the middle. And then I can hit frame and that red laser will frame around my work. I need to go just a hair more to the right. When you're doing this on a shiny surface, it can be tough to see that red laser beam. And I'll get in the light burn later and I'll make an actual template for this because uh, we got a lot of these to do. There you can see what the uh, beam kind of looks like. I'm looking at this from the back. When you're standing in front of this, you don't see it at all. But again, uh, wear safety glasses or I should say laser goggles or laser glasses when you're going to be looking at that beam and all. So who is this for? This is for those who, uh, if you're into jewelry and making custom jewelry, this would be ideal. We don't do that here at all, but that would be a very, very good application for it. Uh, my primary application is going to be for uh, trademarking and marking on some other metals. And this will, also, this will do gold, silver, copper. Uh, brass, steel, aluminum, uh, I suppose it would do zinc, I haven't tried it on, a, I don't have any zinc, try it on. Uh, I would imagine it would uh, etch galvanized metal, but I kind of advise against that unless you're in a really, really well ventilated area because it could vaporize that zinc and put that into the air and that's not a good thing to breathe at all. So you, you want to have a fan boy behind you, you want a fume extraction, you have this in enclosure if you're going to be doing something with galvanized. Uh, it also uh, will do acrylic. I wouldn't be trying to use this to cut anything. It's strictly for engraving and etching. So I've had people ask in the past with different lasers, you know, what well, can I cut steel with it? I got, you know, I want to cut some parts to make some custom parts for my car or whatever. You're fabricating something. Uh, this does not cut steel. And neither does a blue dot laser. They just don't do it. And you're not going to get a uh, laser like that that can cut plate steel for a thousand dollars or whatever. You're going to be paying several thousand dollars for it and or get a plasma cutter, one of the two. Uh, you know, this doesn't cut steel, it doesn't cut aluminum. Uh, as I mentioned, it does, they claim it could cut a very, very thin stainless steel sheet, but that would be almost like aluminum foil type of, like I say, stick to just doing a engraving and etching with it. So where can you get one of these? Well, you can get it from Longer's website, and I'll put a link in the description for it. Um, it's, if, like I say, if, you're, if you need to etch metal or engrave, interchangeable there, depending on what you're exactly doing. Uh, especially with jewelry, as I mentioned, this, this would be ideal. Okay, so another question I'm going to get, well, I've got maybe a uh, sculpt fun laser, I've got, uh, you know, a portrait laser, I've got x D1, or, yeah, I've got a lot of those different lasers here. Will this fit on it? Probably not. This is made for uh, the longer B1 and the longer Ray 5. So here's a comparison. Down here is what was done in that blue diode laser, and as you can see, they worked horribly. These were all done here with the infrared laser, and... No warping, it all came out fine. I see I didn't get perfectly centered on a couple of them, but uh, that won't matter. They'll still work as a trademark. They're going in the bottom of a cup anyway. And when I get my template set up and to run a lot of these, I'll have that precise so I won't have any of those little offsets. Okay, so how do you focus it? You loosen your thumb screw up. Little kickstand down here you drop down. 
Make sure it snaps all the way down. You get that centered on your material where you're going to be doing your engrave or your etch. And pop that back up. And I am going to do a little bit of engrave on this plastic remote. This is a uh, remote for one of the studio lights and everybody keeps forgetting which what this was for so I'm going to put studio spot engraved on the back of it. Since I'm working from current position, not absolute coordinates here, I will frame this. And that'll work out fine. And I am going to run at uh, this being plastic. We'll try this at uh, 50 millimeters per second and 80% power. Hopefully you can see that. Studio spot. So now when somebody picks up this little remote, what's this for? Look at the back. Studio spot. Yeah, that red dot you see right there is what you uh, position your laser on. So there's a demonstration of the uh, longer 1064 Ruby infrared laser. It's two watt output. Uh, again, it's not for cutting. It's for engraving on metals and engraving or etching on metals. Does it work on wood? Not very well. If you're, when you're going to do wood, you put the diode head back on there and, and run with that. It, it, two watt out, but it, it, it does make a mark on wood, but it, it takes way too long. So everything has its purpose. For example, you don't make uh, soup in a colander, you know, that kind of thing. Everything has its purpose. Uh, this is absolutely fantastic for doing metals and I'm very very pleased the way these uh, stainless steel logos worked out so now I just need to get my template made because I've got a whole bunch of these to run so if you got anything out of this appreciate getting the thumbs up always helps the channel I'm Roger in the shop see you in the next one